Hey everybody, welcome back to Retro Modding News, my weekly video where I talk about what's new and upcoming in the world of retro console modding. First up this week, we have a thumb from Sed. Yeah, just a thumb. Well, it's really what's behind the thumb that's interesting. Behind the thumb is a PC engine. Said, if you don't know, is the creator of the Sega Saturn ODE, the Fenrir. So this photo of Said's thumb is either one of two things. Either it's just a simple pickup photo that he made, or maybe it's a new teaser for an upcoming PC engine ODE. I don't think there's really any hints or anything here in the comments. So we're just gonna have to wait and see if this actually turns out to be a PC engine ODE from Said, or maybe it's something different. Next up this week, we have a tiny update from Crix about the new Turbo EverDrive Pro. Just just kind of a feature list that maybe is just rolling around in their head right now. So some of these things we've talked about before, like launching CD-based games from the SD card, it will have an in-game menu, save states, cheats, arcade card functions, I'm not really sure what that is, can operate as a Tenno Koei 2, which is some kind of a save backup thing, I think. And it has menu improvements, I guess, over the baseline Turbo EverDrive. I know this is a pretty small update, but I like to keep up to date with what Crix is working on, and especially now where we're having a brand new Pro EverDrive. Next up this week, we have an awesome update from Humble Bazooka. I think maybe they've talked about this before, but it looks like they're working on a Bluetooth replacement PCB for the PC Engine controller to make the PC Engine controller a wireless Bluetooth controller. Currently, this is just a prototype, but Humble Bazooka has made a, a couple of different Blue Retro adapters already, so maybe they're pretty familiar with the Bluetooth protocol, I guess. And the cool part is it sounds like we'll be able to use original controllers. Well, they're using this old school TG16 controller, which I hope is built off of the same mold as a PC engine, but this will probably be as good as we can get to a Bluetooth controller that looks like the original PC engine controller. Next, we have a quick update from Miramasa. They have been working on a project to let you use a Famicom disk system in an NES. So obviously, it wasn't designed to work with an NES because the Famicom is like a top loading situation. And there's two different parts to the Famicom disk system. There's the actual base drive itself, which sits below the Famicom. And then there's this FDS RAM that actually goes into the cartridge slot. But that FDS RAM won't fit into the cartridge slot for the NES. So it looks like Miramasa is working on a way to be able to use that FDS RAM in an NES. So this is a pretty cool project and I'm really curious what is going to be involved in this whole entire project getting to use the Famicom disk system with an original NES. A couple of weeks ago I talked about this IDE device emulator that Felix was working on and it looks like there are already open for pre-orders. So let's check out the pre-order page. And right away you can see that this is not a cheap device. This is 320 US dollars. But this project is based off of a high speed FPGA. Maybe that's part of the high price but it's going to feature CD DVD emulation, DVD RAM emulation, zip disk emulation, super disk emulation, hard drive emulation, which is pretty neat. And it's going to work off of a micro SD card. It also looks like there's going to be some optional add-ons in the future. So this first one says optional LCD OLED display with rotary encoder, maybe so that you can have the IDE emulator, you know, tucked away inside of a computer or like vintage computer or something and then have a screen on the outside so that you can switch between different images or something. That would be kind of interesting. And an optional Wi-Fi module. So maybe you can dump files to your SD card over your network. Uh, that would be pretty cool to be able to, you know, update what's actually on that computer without actually having it turned on or anything. I keep saying computer, but you could use this theoretically with any device that uses IDE. And another interesting thing is it allows multi-device emulation. So you can have, with IDE, you have a master and slave device. So that's kind of two devices on a single IDE cable. I immediately thought about the original Xbox. I wonder if you could use this to emulate the original Xbox's CD drive and hard drive just with one device. Anyways, batch one pre-orders are going on right now with a shipping estimate of April to May of next year. We finally have some more details about Gamebox's 64HD, which is an internal HDMI mod for the N64. The pre-order is going on right now, but there is also a list of features. So let's go dive into the pre-order site. Batch one pre-orders are going on right now with an expected ship date of February 2023. The price is $110, which as far as I know, that's the cheapest N64 HDMI mod. So as you can see, part of the 64 HD is actually going to be mounted on the top of the N64's heatsink, more like the N64 RGB than any of the other HDMI mods. And you can see two flex cables coming off of them. One is an FFC that is going to go to another board, which is like a little HDMI board near the back of the N64. But the black one here is going to be a flex cable that gets soldered to the N64 CPU or GPU, I guess. Okay, I guess it's neither a CPU or GPU, it's an NUS. I'm not really sure what that stands for, but yeah. So here's all the parts. There's this little board down here that has the full-size HDMI port 
and the FFC. And we can see the long flex cable that gets soldered to the N64. So let's take a quick look at the features. So we have supported resolutions, 1080p 30 FPS, 720 at 60, 480 at 60, and 240p at 60 hertz. So having 1080 30 is kind of interesting. I think the N64 already doesn't have a very good frame rate. I suppose it depends on the game that you're playing. So I'd be interested to see how well that works on uh, modern TVs. 720 60 is probably going to be the common resolution. It's actually the default mode, and that's going to give you probably the best performance. But this 240p mode is actually really interesting. A lot of people were badgering game box to add this 240p mode so that they can just use an HDMI to component converter so that you can use this directly with a TV that has component inputs. So let's see some other features. We have integer scaling, uh, full screen, non-linear modes. That's going to be non-linear, obviously. A TV mode and an overscan mode so that you can adjust the overscan of the crop of the image. is going to be a de-blur mode, which is pretty interesting. A pixel smoothing filter. I never really use those, but it's interesting that they added one and three different scan line modes. So that's it, that's the 64 HD. Now, if you don't have an N64 HDMI mod, are you interested in this? Is this going to appeal to you um, as far as getting an HDMI mod in your N64? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. It's not very often that we get to talk about new ODEs for any system, let alone the PlayStation 1, but Paolo7x8 here on Twitter announced this Pico Station mod, which is a PlayStation 1 ODE using a Raspberry Pi Pico. And like they say, the bonus is it's going to be open source. So one of the interesting things here is that currently in this stage of development, Paolo is using the X Station QSB to get some of the information out of the PS1 and into their ODE. And they actually posted a really funny picture of this SSB, which is slow solder board, which is just kind of like a quick solder board that you have to solder the rest of the wires on the bottom of the PCB. But you may be curious if Rama, the creator of the X station is okay with that, them using this QSB. And they kind of gave their blessing a little bit here in this tweet, just kind of saying that there's only so many ways that you can build a QSB in the bottom. I'm not 100% sure if the X station QSB is going to be part of the open source project, but maybe they'll make their own QSB that's in the same sort of style of the X station QSB. And actually it will only work with the same motherboard revisions like the whatever PU18 or whatever, basically the same motherboard revisions that the X station works with. So yeah, that's exciting to have hopefully a new PlayStation 1 ODE that is open source. So you'll be able to build them yourself if you want to. So yeah, it's a pretty exciting day. Next, we have a pretty interesting project that is a transistor level reverse engineering of the NES PP you. There is a video here of the current progress of this project. You can see, I believe this is a Famicom board. Maybe this is a top loader. I think it's a Famicom, but you can see a giant FPGA dev board here and there's wires kind of going all over the place and the PPU up here is missing. I believe this project is called Breaks by Emu Russia. So let's take a look at the GitHub to see if we can get any more information. So here we are on the GitHub here. Now the unfortunate thing is there's a little bit of information here in English. It says the project is aimed to reverse engineer the following integrated circuits. And then there's a list of NES PPUs, I guess, different versions. And the goals of the project are to create complete transistor circuits and convert those transistor circuits to more high level logic gates and then simulate those circuits and write logic gate level emulator. So essentially they're trying to create a more accurate PPU emulation, I suppose. So we know that the NES RGB uses a little bit of emulation to operate. And don't get me wrong, this is also going to be emulation, but it's supposed to be more accurate because it's at the transistor level, basically how they're reverse engineering it. There is a little bit more information, but it's mostly in Russian. I think these are die shots of different chips here. So the PPU, APU, and the 6502 is at the CPU. So really interesting project. I'm not sure what form this is going to take, if it's going to be a complete PPU replacement, or if you're going to need some part of the original original NES PPU in here. We're just gonna have to wait and see when we get more information about this Emu Russia Breaks project. Before we get to the big story this week, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. Almost every week I talk about a new open source retro project that requires a custom PCB. PCBWay is a custom PCB manufacturer. All you've gotta do is download the Gerber files from the project, upload them to PCBWay, choose what color PCB that you want, and they will manufacture that board and send it back to you. They even have a PCB assembling service, so if you are not interested in hand soldering SMD components on custom PCBs. They offer a service where they'll solder those parts on for you. They also provide 3D printing services. So if you don't have your own 3D printer, they've got you covered. And if you're a mod creator and you're looking to create a professional product, they even offer injection molding and CNC services as well. So thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. You can check them 
out in the link in the description below. The big story this week is this tweet from Consoles for You. Now, there's a couple things going on here. First, it sounds like Consoles for You is teaming up with Zwenergy and ManCloud, who are some of the developers behind the GBA HD project which is a Game Boy Advance consoleizer. But the second and more important part is they're working on an SNES HDMI mod called the SNES HD. Now this mod is currently in ongoing development, but it sounds like it's only going to be for two chip SNESs and it's currently just running at three times mode, which is 720p. I know this video and this tweet might not look like much right now, but Zwenergy in my Discord mentioned that he's going to try to create higher quality demos of the actual mod working. We don't have any more information right now, but I think this is going to be a super popular mod. Every time I ask people, you know, what mods do you think are missing from the current lineup of mods that are out there? And most of the time people say that they would like HDMI mods for older consoles. So the NES, the Super Nintendo, and the Genesis. I'm super excited about this mod. I was a big fan of the GBHD. I think Zwenergy and ManCloud did an awesome job there. So I can't wait to see what they do with this SNES HD mod. That's it for this week, but check out this video to learn more about the original Xbox X3CP reproduction mod. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.